This week at Interior. Secretary Jewell in New Jersey this week to mark the 50th anniversaries of two visionary pieces of legislation, the Wilderness Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act. President Johnson signed both into law on the same day in 1964. Together they would transform conservation and outdoor recreation in the United States, eventually protecting more than 109 million acres of pristine landscape while advancing more than 40,000 recreation and conservation projects in communities across the nation. At the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge in New Jersey, Secretary Jewell said we have a moral obligation to future generations to build on this legacy. We have dozens of bills with wilderness uh, in them that members of Congress from both parties in bipartisan cooperation want to get across the finish line. And uh, I know that if we do that, this Congress will be known for many things that the 88th Congress was known for. And I hope we can turn the corner and make that happen. The secretary called for the full and permanent funding of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which doesn't use taxpayer money, but rather is largely paid for from royalties from oil and gas operations in waters owned by all Americans. After the anniversary ceremony, Secretary Jewell took part in a service project in the Great Swamp, along with members of the Student Conservation Association. The Secretary in New Orleans this week for the 24th Annual Society of Environmental Journalists Conference. In her remarks to conference goers, the Secretary spoke to the importance of the President's Climate Action Plan and the economic cost of inaction, as the SEJ focuses their conference this year on risk and resilience. While in the Gulf, the Secretary also toured Jean Lafitte National Historic Park with scientists and staff from the National Park Service, USGS scientists, and the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. Together, they're studying the impacts of sea level rise and climate change throughout the park, as well as working to restore saltwater marshes. Bureau of Land Management Director Neil Cornsey on hand near Prim, Nevada this week, as officials gathered to break ground on the state's newest and largest solar energy array. The Silver State South Project is located on 2,500 acres of federal land south of Las Vegas. Once completed, the plant could generate 50 megawatts of electricity or enough energy to power about 80,000 homes. All part of the President's Climate Action Plan to create jobs, cut carbon pollution, and develop clean domestic energy resources. The Fish and Wildlife Service this week teamed up with National Geographic to fight the illegal ivory trade. A new public service announcement is playing in New York City's Times Square, as well as on YouTube. Fish and Wildlife says the elephant population is declining and that without intervention, most or all of the elephants could vanish from the wild in Africa inside a decade. The service says it crushed six tons of illegal ivory last year to send a message that the trade won't be tolerated in the United States. And with September designated as National Preparedness Month, Folks at USGS are using science to help you get prepared in the event of an emergency, anything from an earthquake to an epidemic. Whatever the threat, there's almost always something you can do to get ready, whether that's the simple stockpiling of key emergency supplies or just keeping a watchful eye on potentially threatening weather conditions. Check out USGS.gov and find out more, and check out the details on the National Day of Action plan for September 30th, part of America's Preparathon, led by FEMA. That's this week at Interior.